If you're in the market for an affordable performance sport compact, 2022 is really the year for you. Volkswagen started it out with the redesigned Golf R and GTI, and then of course Hyundai introduced the Elantra N. However, a lot of enthusiasts have been waiting for this model. This is the completely redesigned 2022 Subaru WRX, the only all-wheel drive offering in the segment for this price point. And because this is the redesigned model, it's built off of the all-new patented Subaru Global platform. As you can see, it's got new styling on the outside, new tech features on the inside, and underneath the hood, we have a more powerful and larger 2.4-liter turbocharged Boxer Flat 4. So today I'm here in Thermal, California. Let's finally take a first look at this all-new Performance Sport Compact. Now, of course, Subaru was supposed to show us the redesigned WRX at the New York Auto Show last month. However, when that got canceled, Subaru had to change their plans. And that's why I'm here in Thermal, California during this hot time here, basically in the desert, to show you guys this all new WRX. So let's start, of course, with the design because Subaru has a tendency to show us these wild concepts. If you remember a few years ago, they showed us the, Viz the Visiv concept, which was supposed to preview the next-gen WRX. And you can see from this new version, they took some influences from that model, but they also had to tame it down, of course, for the full production model. Now, of course, this particular one here that I'm showing you is the dark sapphire blue. I actually just saw this color in the all new um, Subaru BRZ. And Subaru technically is launching the car in an orange color. The orange color uh, definitely will show off a very interesting styling trait, which we didn't expect on the new WRX, which is all the black plastic cladding. But here on this darker blue, let's start, of course, with the design of this vehicle. This particular one here, I believe, is the uh, base trim line of the vehicle. Now, all WRX models, unlike the previous generation, will come standard with the company's full LED headlights. The upgraded premium and limited trims and GT will have their steering adaptive swiveling headlights, which will also include the LED daytime running light and LED turn signals. This one here, as you can see, has an incandescent turn signal and no LED daytime running light. The lower portion here, you can see, has these fog lights, which look good, uh, but you can see here the new fascia here with the Subaru hexagonal grille, uh, these cladding here, this kind of gray, um, non-painted cladding with the lower intakes definitely is a little bit controversial, less annoying looking or less controversial in this dark sapphire blue. But let me know in the comments below if you guys like the new cladding. From the front, I think this car looks great. Subaru calls the headlights Kanoji headlights, which really take a lot of design influence, of course, from that Visiv concept that they showed a few years ago. Now, obviously the hood scoop is functional and I really wanna pop the hood to show you guys underneath the hood, but Subaru asked me not to. Under the hood, you're gonna have the new 2.4 liter FA24 turbocharged direct injection Boxer Flat 4. This is the same engine from the Subaru Ascent. It now makes 271 horsepower. That's an increase of 11 horsepower over the base two liter, um, but torque remains the same at 258 pound feet. Now, I'm surprised to see the torque is the same considering it's a larger engine, but Subaru says it's got a fatter torque curve and it, you'll just be able to, ex to access that wide power band at a much lower RPM. Now, the tra standard transmission is a six speed manual. Uh, a new transmission is the Subaru Performance Transmission. It's the company's very updated CVT, which the company says will give you up to 50% faster uh, upshifts and about to 30% faster downshifts on the two to three and three to two. So um, Subaru says that the performance automatic will come standard with their eyesight, uh, but they say it's going to give you a lot better performance versus the previous generation, which also again had a CVT. Now this particular one here uh, has the 18 inch wheels. These are the upgraded wheels that you can get on the car. They're wrapped in 245 40 series R18 tires. Um, you can see the brake calipers. I wish Subaru had offered like a painted caliper or something like a Brembo. That's gonna be probably reserved for the STI. They didn't wanna talk about STI today, obviously. This is just an event for the WRX, but here's the rest of the side profile. You can see some of the vents that you're seeing here along with the non-painted cladding. These are functional vents. This all helps with high-speed stability is what Subaru says. You have these Dunlop high-performance summer tires. And you can see here, a lot of the cladding continues along the lower rocker panel. On this dark blue, it's less noticeable. I also like how you can still get a sunroof even on this base model. You can see there's the orange one that's kind of approaching there. Uh, and in terms of the size, Subaru didn't have final dimensions for this vehicle yet. Although I am thinking that the wheelbase has been stretched by about three inches. That's what I saw based on rumors. They're gonna have those final numbers for us as we get closer to the on-sale date. Now, looking at the rear, this is another controversial design element here because with this blue, you can see there's so much cladding back here. The bumper almost looks like it's non-painted. It almost looks unfinished. To me, when I saw it, I thought it looked like the car was in an accident and had it didn't have the bumper uh, finished off in the same paint color. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the design. Uh, I do think the taillights have a very Honda Civic look to them, especially the 2012 Civic and Civic SI. You can see the taillights have this magma design to them 
with these kind of crystallized lenses inside. It's very Mercedes, uh, like looks very premium. You can see the turn signals are just an incandescent design. You have the usual uh, Subaru badges here, and then you have this low profile rear deck spoiler, which the WRX is not available with a big wing. They're gonna save that, of course, for the uh, STI version. Now opening up the trunk, they don't have any trunk figures yet, although it looks like the seats they still fold down uh, in a 60-40 manner. The old one had roughly 12 cubic feet of space. These are very early prototypes. This one here, as you can see, doesn't have a spare. It just has a fix a flat kit and an air compressor. So I, it looks like it has roughly the same space, but overall, this is only available as a four-door sedan, just like the previous generation. So let's move into the interior of the all new WRX. And as you can see, if you guys have spent some time in the previous generation, it doesn't look all that different. This is the only interior color combination that Subaru offers with the black and some of the gray with the red stitching. These are the cloth seats that you get on the premium model. You can see you've got a new steering wheel with a flat bottom design. This baser premium or base trim has a six way manual adjustable seat. And you can see alloy pedals are also included on some trims. And for you audiophiles out there, Subaru does offer an 11 speaker Harman Kardon stereo, which is gonna sound great. In terms of the materials, you can see it's a soft touch injection molded plastic with some carbon fiber look trim and a chrome door handle. Now let me get inside and show you guys a brief overview of the cabin here. And then when I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Now getting in, let me turn on the air conditioning because it's super hot out here. Now obviously I'm not allowed to drive this car yet or talk about how it drives because this is just a very early first look at the vehicle, but you can see the gauge display there looks pretty familiar to other Subaru models. I'm surprised the company didn't want to go with an all digital display. I was hoping they would do that. You can see the steering wheel has a tilt and telescoping design, great amount of adjustability you can also get. And then this massive 11.6 inch screen, this is almost five inches larger than the previous generation. So Subaru really has upgraded the tech. This is the same screen that you see in the Outback and in the Legacy. It includes Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can also get built-in GPS when you put the vehicle in traverse. You can see there's the backup camera. It gives you distance markers and trajectory. The screen itself is pretty responsive. All of your usual buttons and sources and controls are now in the screen. The eyebrow display here is gone. And in terms of the materials, you can see this base or premium model has more hard touch plastic. Uh, this is also hard touch. I believe the higher trims, which I'll get into the GT and show you guys that in a second, have a little bit softer materials. Um, the manual transmission, you can see it's very similar to the last WRX. Great short throws. You have two USB ports over there. The clutch is also medium and it's heft. Uh, I'll be curious to see how it drives. You still have a traditional cable handbrake, cup holders over here. The armrest here is not quite padded, but this is a very early prototype model. So I'll have to wait and see what the production model looks. Seats are also pretty comfortable and supportive. I like how my tester also has a sunroof. There is no LED lighting in this model here, but you can see the glove compartment is a bin style. It's nicely sized. So overall it feels pretty nice in here. It's also really easy to see out of, but let's hop into the GT version. And I'll show you guys what the interior looks like of that model. So just because I have the GT trim here, I wanna show you guys what it looks like really quick on the inside. You can see they do come standard with these Recaro bucket seats, which have much more aggressive bolstering. I also love the leather, the Alcantara. You still have a lot of the red stitching, but these are definitely the seats you're gonna to wanna to get in terms of all around performance on, on track and of course on the road. I actually just sat in them, they're pretty comfortable. They also include a eight way power driver seat here, although there's no adjustable lumbar on the inside, but it's nice you get eight way power. No. Uh, memory seats, which I pretty much expected in this segment, but you can see some of the interior materials in here, you can tell are definitely nicer versus the premium that I just got out of. You can see, for example, the dash has some actual stitching here with that same Alcantara material. It's completely padded here. There's some stitching along the center console. Here's what the shifter looks like for the automatic model. And really only the hard touch plastic is only on this portion right here. This is actually soft touch along with this right here. So Subaru has really been working hard to upgrade the materials. You can see the instrument panel looks pretty much the same aside from the drive mode selector, which by the way, the mode selector is right here. You can see there's a sport plus setting. There's also an individual, uh, there's a comfort, normal. So all these different drive modes and Subaru gives you the ability to kind of custom tailor your drive mode to exactly how you like, because this is the model here with the adaptive dampers. It's got a re redesigned suspension. So we'll try that out when we actually drive this car in a few more months. But the drive mode selector here is pretty impressive. And you can see uh, your two USB ports are over here. There's a place to where you can put your phone, um, electronic parking brake on the automatic version. And then with the automatic, you also get Subaru's eyesight system with adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. This is the first ever WRX to have those features. So if you guys want basically everything, you're gonna to wanna to choose uh, the GT version, but remember it was only available with this automatic. So let's quickly hop into the back seat of the new WRX. Now, obviously I don't have any figures just yet for dimensions, including the rear seat legroom. However, because this vehicle has a longer wheelbase, you should expect the rear seat legroom to improve. So let's see if that's the case. 
Now you can see this is where I probably have the seat to drive. There's definitely more leg room back here and the seats themselves, they look pretty nice. They have the same contrasting red stitching. This is the premium model, was able to confirm that uh, with Subaru. Materials back here are hard touch plastic, but you still have the uh, carbon fiber look with the chrome door handle. When I get back here, you can see definitely more leg room. At five foot seven, I'd probably say there's a, probably a couple inches more legroom back here. You also have two USB ports right there, which is great to see. They're just the standard USB. Looks like this could be a button for heated rear seats, although it would be nice to see some rear seat air vents. Uh, just a single mat pocket on this premium version. And then you can see here there's an armrest that folds down, gives you two cup holders. The headrests here, all three of them are adjustable, uh, which is great. And then you can see the sunroof does take up a little bit of space back here. Subaru doesn't offer a panel roof. So overall, rear seat room is improved as I expected, uh, but it is missing a couple of features that I would like it to have. So starting out in the manual, huh? That's definitely the one that uh, I would want to start out with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the handling of the two is really similar. Uh, the big difference for me from like my feel uh, from the old gen to this is the, the chassis stiffness and just sort of how how planted it feels. Okay. So we'll do like a, we'll do one hot lap and then uh, we'll let we'll do a pull down lap and we can chat about it. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the car handles really nice. You know, I, I think Subaru's always been very much about balance yeah. and not having one thing really overpowering the other. And they've stunt, they stay true to that. I think it's just an evolution of what they've already had, right? Yeah. The stiffness, you know, because it, it's stiffer without adding any weight, you know, when you're driving in a corner, it rolls a little less. Okay. Because it rolls a little less, you got a little bit more weight on the left side tires. So from a balance perspective, it's a little bit less understeery off the corner because as you're rolling through here, there's more weight on that tire pulling you out of the corner. Yeah. Um, so that helps the balance of it, just so it's not so understeery. Yeah, I mean, I can feel it rotate really easily. For an all-wheel drive car, I love how the back will well, kind of over, or it'll oversteer a little bit. It's really yeah, nice. it's, it's, it's close. Like it's still balanced a little bit understeery for what would be optimum. Yeah. But for a four wheel drive car, it's easily the most balanced. Okay. I and mean, that's a four wheel drive car around any of these tracks. Okay. Well, I'd be um, curious to see how the automatic performs out here because the manual is just classic. It's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, the, 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 the automatic has some really cool features with the suspension that are super easy for everybody to feel. Okay. Um, and a, a pretty practical use. Awesome. Like, I, I enjoy that car a lot. I think I, I'm the most fun driving this because I can do more. I can I can make some little bit more things happen. Um, but that car, you know, with the control you have in the suspension and the ease of being able to drive it really fast or or just cruise in it uh, around the, around town, it's it's pretty hard to do that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. My pleasure, man. Yeah. All right. So now we're in the automatic car. Mm -hmm. It should be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, the shipping's pretty cool. Okay. Um, you know, basically, or from the driver mode perspective, Sports Plus is everything stiff and quick. It gives you an individual option. Basically, I'm running Sport everything, except for the climate. It's really hot out. It's 105 degrees. So we'll take away the couple horsepower reduction you have for max AC today. Yeah. Uh, so again, I'll do you a, a fast lap. I think you'll feel like the car handles very similar. It's got the same stiffness and the same feel. And then we'll do uh, on our cool down lap, I'll show you the suspension. So it shifts super quick. Wow. Okay. 
While you're driving, say it starts raining on you or something, or you got less grip, you can take the suspension to comfort, soften it up, and you'll feel on a track that's got a lot of grip. It's a racetrack, it's got all this grip. Yeah. It'll it'll roll the car a bit more, a little more roll out of it. It'll probably it'll transfer a little bit too much weight. Yeah, you feel a little more body weight now. Right, it's more body movement. Um the advantage to that though, because it's softer, is when you hit the curbs, it's, it's a much subtler yeah. feeling on there. So in a gravel setting, if you're gonna take this thing on a gravel road, this suspension setting, I know it says comfort, but this is the optimum suspension setting for that environment. Yeah. So as someone who likes to drive a car like at the max, I love the fact that I have the ability to you know, create an advantage on a low grip and a high speed and a high grip just at the touch of the button. Okay. And obviously over here you can really feel. <laughs> yeah, I definitely also noticed the um, the Recaros in this car really holds you in place a lot better, for sure. The the other one I was sliding around a little bit more. These are a little bit more uh, yes. restrictive. Yep. True. So with a little over 21,000 units sold last year, the WRX still represents a pretty good amount of sales, especially for this segment. It's kind of a shrinking segment, but really if you guys are looking for an affordable sport compact with all wheel drive, this is the only player in town because all of its new competitors are still only front wheel drive. Even Hyundai's new Elantra N, which I haven't had a chance yet to see in person, although I drove a cam mode model a few months ago, really only comes with front wheel drive. Now, speaking of which, I did get a chance to go out with Scott Speed, as you guys saw, in the manual and in the automatic. Very, very obviously more interested in the manual model, but the automatic shouldn't be ignored as well because Subaru did spend some time with addressing the concerns of the previous generation. And really, once you kind of get past the strange styling and all that cladding, which kind of makes me think that Subaru could be hinting at a perhaps cross trekky version with the WRX powertrain, it's really gonna come down to your subjective taste with the style. In the right colors, you can't help but notice the cladding as much as other colors. Subaru obviously hasn't announced pricing just yet. They did say that this car will be available toward the end of this year. The current generation starts at around 27,500, goes up to about 32 grand. I expect this new one to be more expensive. The GT version is going to be the top of the spec. So if you want a WRX with everything, including those adaptive dampers, you're gonna to wanna to get with that model, although you should also notate that's only available with the CVT, the Subaru Performance Transmission. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my brief first look overview on the 2022 Subaru WRX. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.